Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Especially Leila. Welcome back. You know, we missed you all this. We miss, long I summer. missed everybody. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and today we have a relatively relatively fresh movie. 20 or three. So how many years? How old is this movie? Um, <laughs> it's hard uh, 19. 19. Okay. 19 right. years. Very, very good. Uh, is 19 uh, old or fresh? Mm -hmm. it's, middle. It's middle. It's funny that Vova, who has 10 years, saying that 19 is a middle <laughs> aged movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dare the Dare Devil. Is it correct pronunciation? Dare the Devil? Yep. Dare yeah. Devil. Yeah. Right. I had difficulties to understand the name, <laughs> this title. So teacher will explain it in the chat, right? So someone who dare not to think of devil. Is it right? Basically, he dares the devil to hurt him. I'm <laughs> so good, nothing can go wrong, devil. You, I, I challenge you to a, a fight. You know, I'm not afraid. So a daredevil is not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. Is not it, afraid of death, not afraid of the devil. <laughs> can, can I say, I don't know, I'm trying to invent some silly examples. Can I say, I don't know, there is water, for instance, someone who is doing water sport. Just trying to think about this other usage. Not dangerous enough. <laughs> you have to do something dangerous to be called a daredevil. Okay, there fire, I don't know, they have white files. <laughs> uh, let's, let's say that Vova jumps out of an airplane with a parachute yeah. and he's fallen and you're supposed to open the parachute right here. And he goes past that point and he waits and he waits and he waits and the instructor's going, oh my God, he better open it. And he waits until the last possible second. And then he opens the chute. Um. That, that's a daredevil. He's daring <laughs> death to take him. So it's it's doing something dangerous or very unwise. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I guess driving. I you you could facetiously say driving in. You have to be a daredevil to drive in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Not to that extreme. Not to that extreme, maybe. But because I have another driving habits, you know. So for me, it's <gasps> kind of a surprise. I think Turkish yeah. people don't. Uh, <laughs> Don't aware of this. Yes, uh, and I think it is problems with um, walking on the road. Yeah, crossroads. Nobody, uh, nobody give, uh, no, nobody uh, let people cross the road on crossroads. You know, they just ignore this. Ignore zebra totally. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I'll give you a good example. Some. Uh, and YouTube influencers want followers, so they'll they'll put themselves in a dangerous position. Like one guy will hang from a a high place with one hand and and hold a selfie stick out there and say, "Look what I'm doing!" You know, that's a daredevil. And sometimes they die. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! Wow! Okay, uh, we have a synopsis, but I watched the movie. <clears throat> I. Dare devil. <laughs> I, I think I can explain, I can answer most of the questions. So we can start. <clears throat> so let's start for the first one. Hassan, could you please take first one? Yeah. Mur Matt Murdoch's childhood. Um, he's a, uh, he lost his mother and he's young age. Uh, so he was raised by his father. And his father was a boxer and he used to be good at his studies. Uh, his father didn't want him to be involved in any kind of fight uh, just because his father is known for his you know, uh, boxing field. Um, then, yeah, he was so good and even somebody voluntarily, uh, how to say that, throwing a gauntlet or uh, uh, asking him for a duo, uh, duo, um, and he refused. Uh, he just leave that place. He didn't uh, continue the fight. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, he's a good child. How how can we how can we describe his father? What the, how what was the word for this? He's lost his hope. What what is the word for this? He, 
<laughs> there is this uh, adjective I wrote here, a washed up boxer. So I looked up the dictionary teacher Lee, not effective anymore. So I think because of his um, drinking alcohol and losing his wife, I think that these are the reasons. Pasant, remember? Yes. Uh... Uh, yeah, he was kind of, I don't know, I, I don't know how to how to describe it, that, but, I, but I see desperate, yeah, he, yeah desperate is, is the same, or despair, it's a despair. He's desperate. I would say he, he had a job, right? He worked for the mob. He was a, a bag man. He beat people up for protection money. So he had a job, but it was illegal it was unethical yeah. it was a, a shameful job so he he was uneducated so he couldn't get you know a skilled job so he had to do gangster type work so i think he was more ashamed of what he did and ashamed that he had kind of failed in life so not That's necessarily why maybe yeah he yeah, not but not desperate but i would just say maybe felt ashamed or disappointed with his himself in life yeah. and what <clears throat> and what he told to his son what is his job you he told a lie he, he lied something like he said i work in, as a dog and as far as i understand to something he oh, said i don't work for fallen fallen yeah, is the name yeah. of the guy yeah i don't work for the bad guys yeah he lied yeah <laughs> he, he, said, he said something about dog, I remember, but I did not catch it. So I, I guess it's kind of a docker or something. Probably a, do, a, a dock worker. Yeah. Okay. yeah uh, maybe he mentioned about his double shifts. You know, if yeah. I really work for him, yeah, I would not do double shifts. <laughs> yeah, we are right. So that's why he was always kind of tired, right? Because he allegedly got double shifts. Okay, it's okay. Let's we understand. But uh, it was a bad kind of district, right? Right. So it was a kind of a ghetto, as far as I understand. Yeah. Am, am I right? Yeah. Hell's well, it's kind of funny. In the old days, Hell's Kitchen was a ghetto area of town, mm -hmm. and then later they they gentrified it. They cleaned it up, and they and today it's kind of a wealthy part of town. But at that time, it was intended to be kind of a ghetto part of town. So it was kind of low class, a lot of crime. <laughs> Lela, do you know this verb, gentrified, that teacher Lee used? Do you know this no. no. Gentrification, right? This is a process, gentrification. You know, it's when town kind of changing itself and one district uh, became to be uh, pricey. Right, too pricey for those who were there <laughs> at the beginning. So let's say it was a poor district, right? Then, but then they built some, I don't know what, office buildings and some malls, something else. And people who live there started to, you know, rent, become to be expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's so... what's happening in Moscow all the time, you know. <laughs> in Moscow, people have to change apartment. Because they used to live there like 10 years ago, but now it's too expensive for them to live there. Yeah. Gentrification. Do you, do you, do you, do you know what is the root of gentrification? Or yeah. I, I, think, I, I think gentlemen, you you <laughs> clean it up where a gentleman will want to come there. Wow. Uh, so what you do, you might have a you know an old part of town that maybe is being preserved for historical reasons, but it gets so dirty and crime ridden that nobody goes there. And then the town says, we've got to do something. So they put policemen there to clean up the crime. They tear down old buildings. They build new buildings. They tear down an old restaurant that was owned by a small family and they put up a you know, a Red Lobster or some large restaurant that's more expensive. And eventually they slowly get rid of the poor buildings and low cost things and replace them with higher cost things at a higher class level. And eventually 
the old people that are there can't afford there anymore and they got to move out. So it's kind of forcing the old people out by taking away what they can afford and making it clean and, and presentable and a little more wealthy where gentlemen are willing to go there now. Wow. <laughs> And, and the old people resent it, of course. Yeah. But I know that opposite processes always exist, right? As also exist. When, you know, there was a Porsche district, but then somehow they, uh, let's say, they build it, built a building with, you know, uh, poor guys, you know, so the social, how we call it, social apartments or something. And now people don't want to live here. <laughs> and they start to leave the, this district and it goes from the Porsche one to the poor one. One word, California. <laughs> wow. Homeless people are everywhere on the sidewalks and people are moving out of San Francisco. There's so much crime here. Businesses are leaving California because they don't control the crime and the homeless people. It, it's out of control. Wow. Is there a word for this, like gentrification? I don't know. I, know. I, guess, I guess we would say de-gentrification. De yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Vova, could you please cover second? Uh, describe how Matt became blind and gained his superpower. Uh, I remember that he walked outside and saw that his father was hitting someone. Beating someone. Yes, beating. Mm -hmm. uh, and he um yeah he got i don't know confused, confused yeah or surprised or disgusted right he did not like what he wanted yes and uh he uh -huh. <coughs> was a dog he ran away right <coughs> dog uh, was a dog i don't know. yes uh, yes and uh some poison Poison, uh, he looked and some poison. Some kind of liquid chemical was there, right? In a big it's barrel. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a, with a, with a symbol, right? Of dangerous poison, poison or something. <clears throat> so he got hurt, right? In the face area, right? Mm -hmm. And got blind. Okay, and what is his superpower? Uh, he, he, like, a whole, a whole he like a bat, right? He can. Uh... No, no, just strange location. He, uh, he hears sound and he sees this. Yeah, he kind of constructs the picture by sounds he hears, right? Is it correct? Mm -hmm. It was kind of uh, this wild <laughs> animal, right? Yeah, he he, he can. Yeah, kind of. His, his hearing, his other senses, hearing, taste touch, movement, his other senses became like super enhanced. And and his hearing, he was able to hear sound waves echoing off of things. You know, things moving in the air, he could heal, hear movement in the air and he could picture that in his mind. Yeah. So kind of like sonar, he was listening to sound movements in the air and he could actually hear or see through walls. Yeah, he can even sense it is going to rain. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, maybe he can feel raindrops falling yeah. before they hit the ground. Well, Rain's... it's pretty <laughs> yeah. strange because the sound does not, what's the word, peer, doesn't go through the walls, right? So probably he should not understand what is going on under the walls. Yeah, walls. No, you, if, if it's thin walls, you can hear through walls. Mm -hmm. In cheap hotels, you can hear <laughs> bang, 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 bang next door. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, I think uh, sound. Uh, can, can, what, what's the word for this? Per, perceive something. When we go through some material. How perceive? Per, yeah. Permeate. Permeate. Yeah, permeate. Mm -hmm. Wow, good word. So can we say that it was a kind of a deeper compensation? Or something. So others yeah, feelings, exactly. other yeah. sense, will deeper compensate the blindness. And this ha this happens in real life. Yeah. yeah. 
when someone goes blind, sometimes their hearing actually gets better. So the body compensates somehow automatically. Yeah. Actually, I read somewhere that dogs' eyesight is not good, but uh, they hear more, right? They, they have very, yeah, they, they can hear frequencies that we can't hear. Right. Yeah, my, my dogs, my two dogs, they hate big mail trucks <laughs> and UPS and FedEx trucks, you know, kind of like big vans. Uh -huh. and, and they can hear their engines blocks away. And my dog will run to the window and he'll look at it and start barking. And I'll look and there's nothing there. And in about 30 seconds, a FedEx truck will start driving down the road. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So hypercompensation, yeah. super power. And now he is kind of, uh, he compensated his blindness and got another kind of power. Right. So he's now a superhero. And we find out that he trains himself and he becomes more acrobatic. He can, he's more agile, more nimble. He can flip and, and dive and, and do all kinds of things. So he becomes kind of an acrobat. So yes. he'll jump off a building and he won't worry about dying because he knows he can grab something down below and slow his fall or grab a cable and and swing around it to slow down his fall he knows he's confident that he can do things that he doesn't fear death right so so they call him the man who does not fear death or the man who's not afraid so daredevil fits that kind of a mindset daredevil. nice okay uh mira can you can you talk today can you go to the next one Number three, Mira? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me try to explain them. So he's dead, right? Matt, Matt's dead. Jack Mardock, he's died. How? So he was uh, when uh, this accident happened to his son. He kind of changed his behavior, right? He kind of found a new goal in his life and started to be a good athlete again, good boxer, started to work as a boxer, to have a regular fights, as far as I understand. And that one day, his uh, boss or someone who pays him arrived and said, you know, uh, those people who you knock out, can I say so? Knocked out, yeah. Knock out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they... Uh, it's not only yours victories. <laughs> Some of them are mine. I uh, order these people to lose the battle, right? The fight. <laughs> and now it's your turn. Now you have to lose uh, battle, right? A fight. <laughs> well, do you understand why it's sometimes it's necessary? Necessary, you know, to fake the result. Um, I what I'm thinking is that in order to make the others earn more, because maybe. They bet on the other bucks. So yeah. I don't know. Exactly. The bad guys bet on who's going to win. <laughs> and they <So> never lose. <laughs> <laughs> on stock market, we call this inside, inside your trades or something. You know, when you exactly know what will happen. So you put your bet on this exact event. And you, especially if this event unlikely, right? People bet against you and you get a lot of money. So that's the idea. Ah, so it is planned in advance, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's yeah, say, you know, let's say, you know, we have a fight, me and Vola. So, and I tell you, so uh, which which one will win this championship, right? And probably okay. I'm a bigger guy, right? And you put your, your money on me, right? But then we both, right? We take orders from the same boss. And this boy, boss told me, you know, you lose. So you lost. You will money. lose. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I will pay money for Vola. Yeah, <laughs> if you know, right? If you know. Okay, so uh, uh, what what Jack did? He did not obey, right? He said, but I don't remember. Probably he did not say anything. He didn't he, say anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he just decided inside, right? Well, he he was going to lose. Because he knew if he didn't lose, he would die, right? 
because yep. the bad guys, you do what they tell you. But his son was out and out there going, come on, dad, come on, dad, come on, dad. So, so yeah. that caused, his, that caused his death. He said, my God, I can't disappoint my son. <laughs> so he disobeyed the bad guy and signed his death warrant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not a good, not a good thing to do. Okay, so they just killed him, right? With uh, we don't, I don't think that we saw the actor who killed him, but we know that there was a red rose on the crime scene, yeah. Yeah, kind of a symbol, kind of a message. Right? Who did it? Uh, that's all, I guess. Right? It's how he yeah. died, and. Also, we know that son was a was on his son was on the crime scene later on, right? And he saw this road, he felt this road, and he understand how it happened. Okay, yeah, he, he either got beat up or shot in a dark alley. I can't remember which. Uh, both <laughs> beat first and then shot. Okay, and then his son found the body and the rose. There was a rose on the body, and yeah. he crushed it. And the thorns made his hand bleed. He was angry. <laughs> yeah, the, the movie itself it has a kind of a comics, right? So a lot of visual uh, hyperbolas. Can I say so? So just Hi, hy hyperbole. Yeah. Hy hyperbole. Yeah. <laughs> Exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one, uh, number four. Four. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Would you like to? Of course. Um, Matt, at night, he became the daredevil, uh, a man without fear, to punish the criminals. And uh, then, during the day, he was a lawyer um, to help the um, poor people around. I think um, his father's death affected him a lot. That's why he became the daredevil during the night and uh, lawyer just by helping the poor people he can give me the message that he's a great person well do you think it's easy for him it was easy for him to become a lawyer if you were uh, orphan from a ghetto you know maybe it is not easy but he's determined as teacherly sad uh, he is like an acrobat because he trained himself a lot to have this balance. He accepted that he's a blind guy. I mean, he managed something really good. And well, you can see that, that he, he, he yeah. has a drunk kind of character, right? He, is a, uh, he can follow the discipline, right? We believe. So probably. Yeah, even if, if uh, a, a child can witness something like that, he, it can affect his future a lot. Yeah, I think so. He wants to take revenge in a way. Was he a good lawyer or bad lawyer? What do you think? Matt, Matt is a good guy. I mean, uh, good like professionally. So he won the most of these uh, cases or he lost them. Yeah, but he doesn't earn enough. His partner is telling him, hey, we should <laughs> earn more, you know, but his aim is different. I don't know, because uh, maybe, maybe he's right. I don't know, because he is helping the poor people. He can't pay him back. Oh, yes. he's, he's, he's a good lawyer because why? What advantage does he have when someone is on the stand testifying? <laughs> Teacher Lee, um, he's a clever, too smart guy, right? And he knows how to respond to uh, the, you know, others. And also he feels a lot without seeing the scene, the spot, you know, he can see instinctively if I am right. But it was, do, do you remember there was an episode when he heard the beating of the heart of the guy yeah, who, yeah, who, yeah. who was a witness or something? Does it help? Uh, his it heartbeat help? can show that person is telling a lie, literally. 
Yes, when you, that's why, that's what a lie detector machine is based on. It monitors your breathing, your heartbeat, your pulse. And when you lie, your body automatically has small changes in your heartbeat and your pulse because you're saying something that your mind knows is false. So yeah, a lie detector machine can listen to your heartbeat and your pulse. And when you tell a lie, it can detect a small change in your, your breathing and heartbeat and it knows you're lying. So he can do that with his ears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, so that, means, but I yeah. have to I have to mention that there are a lot of kind of research uh, that shows that there is no kind of reasonable way to believe to this light detector. So it's a controversial thing. You can train yourself to not react and cheat the machine yeah but the professional ones for example i can't manage to tell a lie my mom understands <laughs> yeah i don't i don't like i don't like to lie either so <laughs> but sometimes white lies teacherly yeah okay uh, so we understand that he's a good lawyer somehow because he has a kind of special abilities right and he is a good guy he works for poor people how we call it pro bono teacher right? pro bono yeah pro bono when you work without kind of money i guess so yeah i don't know how he made enough money to survive if his clients couldn't pay <laughs> I, I i know i think i know how it's made you know so uh, every state they have some kind of I don't know how it's called, tickets or slots for free advocates. So if you don't have a lawyer, they give you a free lawyer, right? Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so, so he, but, he, yeah, he could be paid by the state maybe. Yeah, but it's always like slow, uh, low money, always like very cheap. So yeah. $10, let's say, or $20, something, you know, <laughs> that impossible. Uh, so people, you know, who, who are beginners, lawyers and beginners, they start working pro bono. So it's, uh, free for the uh, clients, but state pay them, you know, for the coffee, I guess. Could be, could be, yeah. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you remember how he dealt with his blindness in his personal life? When he got up in the morning, how did he know how much money was in his billfold? Do you remember his uh, trick? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, do you remember how he sorted money? Yes. Uh, uh, different... He folding papers, right? Folding papers different. Yes. In different ways. Yeah. yeah. Ingenious. <laughs> yes, I agree, teacher. Uh, yeah, use it credit cards. Use it credit, use credit cards. It's better. <laughs> but you can, right? Because you don't see the the how much they going to charge you. <laughs> yeah, in, in Hell's Kitchen, they might say, Oh, this is only a one dollar bill, you know, and it's really a hundred dollar bill. I need more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, life is challenging if you don't see. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go to the romantic story. <laughs> Vasans, could you please cover number five? Because Layla refused to ask her on this question. <laughs> okay. uh, five. The first meeting between Matt and Electra. Yes, Electra arrived to a restaurant uh, while he was having a coffee with his friend and somehow he sensed uh, she's beautiful and he wanted to ask her name but she refused to tell her name and uh, he stalked her and she decided uh, they decided to have a fight uh, in order to get her name it was a fun fight uh, it, uh, it wasn't a, a you know a, a deliberate uh, fight it, it started with a fun moment and uh, they playfully started that fight and eventually he impressed her with his skills so then he uh, she uh, she told her name uh, then her father arrived uh, and she had to leave so she, she went yeah. oh, did you got this message so to you know to get a phone from a girl you have to beat her right 
<laughs> that would be a violence, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so he followed her. So she, she knew that. So she's probably used to men following her. So she confronted him, and when she tried to slap him, even he's blind. When she tried to slap him, he he stopped her hand, and she went and tried to kick him or something else. And he's and he kept blocking all her hits, and that's what started the fight. And after they fought a while, he looked, he grabbed her and said, "You're holding back. You're not fighting real hard, right? That's right. Don't hold back. Fight hard." And she smiled, and then they started fighting harder. <laughs> yeah. So he challenged her, and she accepted the challenge. Yeah, from the, from this episode, we can from this scene we can understand that he, he's kind of professional in these fights, right? So yeah. his blindness not a challenge for him, like at all. <laughs> I see. It's like a karate movie. I would say. Yeah. Are you sure you're blind? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so well, next one asking who is Electra Natures and who is her father, Nicholas Natures. Lila, can you answer? Do you remember who are they? Um, if I remember, um, Nicholas Natures is also known as Kingpin, right? Electra no. is Kingpin. No, he, no? Wasn't, guys, he no, wasn't the Kingpin. He worked for the bad guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Electra is their daughter. Nicholas has uh, a lot of money. He's very rich. And uh, as teacher said, he worked for bad guys. That's all. Well, you know, many, many times when I uh, see some materials for students of English, they say never use very. <laughs> they say find an adjective, you know, that better than very rich or something. Can you make one? <laughs> really? <laughs> really rich. Really. You know what I remember while you're talking? Electra was uh, trained as a very good karate person. And um, her, her mother died. Um, what else? She loves her daddy a lot. Yep. Oh, that's all. I guess it's enough for us, right? So her dad worked for the bad guys, made a lot of money. And then he decided he wanted to stop working for the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And and you've seen in a lot of movies, you can't quit the bad guys. Once you join, it's for life. So they said, okay, sure, we'll let you quit. And then they killed him. You can't quit the bad guys. You're in for life, yeah. Yeah, I remember, right? They did not kill him yet, right? They just... No, oh. no. They hired a kill... They hired an assassin. Do you remember the assassin's name? Um, Bull Bull Bullseye. Bullseye. <laughs> Bullseye, right. Bullseye. Exactly. Oh, he was disgusting. Yeah, okay. Let's, <laughs> uh, let's go to the next one. Um, well, well, let's talk about Van Uric. I don't know which. Uric. I get, yeah. Uric, yeah. Uric. Oh, number seven. Describe who Van Uric is. How does he figure out that they do and in? Identity. The, in, identity. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, when we. Urich. Urich. Is a journalist? A reporter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, and he's. Maybe he likes to talk about the devil. Uh, you know, there is a genre, right? A special genre when you always write about crime, about, you know, blood. It's what attracts uh, people's attention, right? <laughs> so it, it seems to me that he's this kind of uh, reporter who writes his story. His kind of main motive is about, you know, crime, I guess. He's my favorite person mm -hmm. in this movie. Yeah, do you like him? Is he I mean, he's too, 
clever. He is, uh, you know, just following every clue. I mean, he's dedicated, yeah, passionate. Yeah, yeah, dedicated. And a daredevil of his own because he writes about a crime lord in his own city that could kill him if he wanted to. So he's yeah, risk, yeah. Take, you know, risking his life. But what I was getting at, remember when Bullseye and Daredevil fought? Yeah. He grabbed Daredevil's small weapon and he threw it and it stabbed Nicholas in the chest. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Remember in the morgue, the reporter went to the morgue to look at the dead body. And the coroner said, look at this really weird weapon. Right. Watch this. And he did some, he twisted something and it, it popped out into a blind man's walking stick. Yeah. And the reporter had seen Matt Murdock it's with that kind of a maroon colored walking stick. So when it popped out of that walking stick, he knew right away that the killer or the device belonged to Matt Murdock. Uh -huh. So that, that's kind of how he figured that out. He went, whoa, that weapon is a blind man's walking stick. <laughs> yeah. And, and they were together, um, kind of, they, they will and ben, ben, they were together on some kind of event and he already seen uh, uh, this device, so he knew exactly who is this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, nice walk, nice color, or nice walking stick. I forget the also, combat. Also, uh, Matt dropped his walking stick, and he gave it back to him. Ah, that's right. So he knew the color and what it looked like. It was kind of a red color, so he said, nice color, or something like that. So yeah. when this weapon in a dead body popped into the walking stick, he went, oh, shit. <laughs> I know that walking stick. <laughs> uh, yeah, and by but by not telling anything to you know to officials, probably it's not a not smart solution, right? For him. He did not say anything to to, to this mark, I don't know, work. He didn't say anything to anybody because he wants to feel sure about everything. That's why I like him. Okay, I think we, we covered uh, number eight already. So Kim Pin wanted right. uh, the dead because, you know, he wanted to quit, I guess, number eight. Yeah. Uh, Mira, are you with us? Can you talk? I see that you are joining again. She says she wants to listen on. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to Busai. <laughs> Osans, could you please tell us who is this guy and what his speci speciality is? Bullseye never misses a target. Uh, he, um, he plays roulette. Is, is that right? Roulette or the game? They throw a, a small arrow with their hand. Uh, in oh. the bars, it is a small game, right? Yeah. We call it darts. Okay, darts. Okay. And he can do. He can look away. <laughs> and still yeah. hit a little bit exaggerated, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a sharp thrower, and he never misses uh, his target. And he was assigned uh, to kill uh, Electra's father, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, he's a bad. How to say that? He's some yeah, kind of a uh, tough guy. <laughs> His guy has a lot of ego, right? He's self-confident and he is kind of <laughs> not a pleasant yeah. guy to talk with. Right? Yeah, and his body language and the way he behaves in the airport, you know, uh, he uh, carries all this uh, steels and uh, small, tiny weapons. Uh, and he never, he didn't give a, you know, a damn. You know, the, he, he just uh, uh, behaves like a a casual uh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So strange human, right? Not not use gun, but use this small kind of ninja style, right? <laughs> so I don't know how they call they called shurikens or something. Well, do you know? Yes. He was, he was. Uh, sorry. He was using. Yes. You? yes. Okay. Yes. We we call them ninja stars. <laughs> ninja stars. Yeah. In in Japan they call shurikens the small yeah. yeah yeah shuriken I think yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so we already mentioned that father get killed by this hitman, Bullseye. Uh, but Electra, he's blaming the devil because the weapon, right? The pilot was uh, this uh, stick, right? Stick that the devil used. And Electra, Electra recognized it, right? So she blamed the devil. Okay, let's go to the action scenes, right? <laughs> so, Leila, did you enjoy this, uh, you know, all these battles? I mean, after Electra uh, was killed, I stopped watching. Okay, okay. So let's then start with number 11. So I think you watched this Daredevil Devil and Bullseye's uh, battle, no? No, that was, after, just... that, was, that was after Electra got killed, I right. think. Right, yes. After. Because well, I, yeah. I didn't want Electra to be killed. <laughs> nobody, nobody wanted this. <laughs> <laughs> Was she killed? We'll find out later. <laughs> mm, I at thought the, she was. No? At, the end, at the end of the movie, something happened. Okay. Yeah, really? <laughs> yes, you should have watched it. I'm she, so sorry. Is she alive? She actually, there's actually a second movie that was made called Electra. She got her own movie after the Daredevil movie. Wow. I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> Do you remember when he he and she were on the roof? Yeah. Before before it rained, she was wearing a necklace. Do you remember that? And he yeah, and he yeah. and, and and he was feeling her face, and he. He felt and felt the necklace, and he said, "Oh, nice necklace." It My should... mother gave it to me. She said, "Yeah," and and he said, "It should be in Braille. It should yeah. be written in Braille." At uh, the uh, end, uh, at the end of the movie, he goes back up to the roof to mourn her, and I guess he hears something moving, and he grabs it, and it's her necklace. Wow! What? When he feels it, it has braille letters on it. <laughs> wow. So she's alive and she left him a, a braille necklace to kind of hint that she was still alive. Teacher Lee, you made me so happy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so before uh, the battle between Daredevil and Bullseye, Bob Bullseye, there was a battle between Daredevil and Electra, right? And Electra injured him right in the shoulder i remember that's why he missed the part when ball bullseye uh kind of stabbed can i say stopped uh, electra right with his stabbed her uh, in her stomach in, in in the stomach yeah okay that's why we saw that electra is dead at that moment right then what happened Oh. Yes, I remember <laughs> Electra thought that, that uh, he, um, he watched that a bullseye uh, do it, yeah, he yeah. catch it, and, but he, but she can't, she, she thought she can't, she, yes. She could not uh, catch the throwing uh, knife, right? Yes, yes, I think, for, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, teacher Lee, we interrupted you. I was just going to say, she was a very good fighter, but Bullseye seemed to beat her so easily. Mm -hmm. To me, that was a little bit unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, but Bullseye, he's kind of professional, right? He's never missed the target. Yeah. But he did once. <laughs> when? When, Leila? Tell us. A while he was trying to kill Electra's father. Yeah. Daredevil. He, he missed Daredevil. Yeah. Daredevil did the old Matrix bend and, and it missed right. him. And he I said, I missed. Yes, <laughs> I, I never missed. <laughs> this guy is mine because he made me miss. <laughs> <laughs> he almost yeah. wanted to cry, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so who won? Who won in this battle? Daredevil and Bullseye. Bo, who was the winner? Uh, uh, Bullseye. Oh, no. Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil. Okay. Yes. So okay, I, this, I think Bullseye is not uh, 
is not ready to lose because my hands. Yeah, he was he wasn't ready for this. But there was a shooting from police side, right? I remember. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I remember they were fighting and Bullseye learned that loud noise like hitting the organ pipes. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh, upset Daredevil. So he started making noise and he was beating Daredevil. And he threw a bunch of broken glass at Daredevil, you know, and he was he was doing something with Daredevil. Yeah. And Daredevil heard the sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew that someone was going to shoot through the window. So he he pulled, uh, he let the guy, uh, Bullseye's hands move forward a little bit, and the bullet went right through both hands. <laughs> so he he put him in the, let's say, target's place, right? So it was <laughs> like this. Line of sight, yeah. Wow. I don't know how he knew where the guy was aiming. Was he aiming for Daredevil? Was he aiming for Bullseye? Where, who was he aiming for, you know? Yeah. Well, do you remember that during the rain, uh, Daredevil got the ability to kind of the see to see the picture? Do you understand why? Why? Uh, because this water, kind of, they make a sound, so it's kind of, you know, they draw the silhouette of water or the surface. You know yeah. what I told you, Ivan? I noticed that whenever it rains, yeah. Matt sees the silhouette. So I didn't understand why. <laughs> now, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so and it's kind of con contradict, in my opinion, uh, this uh, strategy when the shattered eyes and organ sound. So, in my opinion, it should improve the vision of Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, it's kind of contradict. So rain helps, but organ uh, not. So how? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I think it's probably the volume. It's so loud, it blocks out all the other noises that help him see Could other be. things. Yeah. Could be. Especially, do you remember, <laughs> Leila, what kind of bed Daredevil had? Where he slept, do you remember? Let's ask whoa, whoa, mm. where, where, what kind of bed they, they will have? Mm. Uh, box with water. With, with why? Without noise. To block all the sounds, right? In the liquid. So ah. it's kind of a coffin oh. with water. <laughs> I thought about it and I couldn't find the answer. But... <laughs> yeah. So just block the senses, you know, to have a rest. Yeah, it was a metal coffin, and his ears were underwater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. But uh, I don't know about him, but I like to turn around. <laughs> During the, when you're sleeping, you, you write to have yes, a just... Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you can sink, right? Or not sink, to be to draw, drown. I don't know actually how to say it. If you turn into in the water when you sleep, you drown. Will drown. drown. Right? Yeah. 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 So, I just read your uh, your example when you say that only some subjects can sink and some can be drawn. So drawn can be only living creatures, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> and sink only sheep, yeah. I don't walk, something yeah. not living. Yeah. Now probably he was lying on a flat surface so he couldn't go down underwater. Yeah. <laughs> but but if he turned over, yeah, his mouth could go underwater. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not for me. But you know, uh, this Ben Affleck, the actor, yeah, uh, the, he he plays characters that have some kind of a a problem. If you remember, he was in a movie called The Accountant. Yeah, without senses, he beat himself. Yeah, and he had he was autistic or something, and he had to make make himself pain or something. So he always plays kind of a, a deficient person. So in this one, he he's got to block all sound or he can't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go fuser, fuser, not fuser, further, further. Ah, ah, again, <laughs> Let's go fuser. Uh, I can say this. Vasans, could you please tell us about Daredevil and Kingpin? Kingpin, do you remember black guy who is uh, in charge yeah. of all the crimes in the town? Yeah. 
So what was the idea? Kingpin, uh, uh, he was the mastermind and he was behind all the crimes. So he wanted to eliminate him. But uh, fortunately, he, he happened to be the same guy who killed his father too with, a, with his signature uh, rose. Uh, he leaves the rose uh, with the dead body. So uh, he found, uh, connected the dots. Uh, then found out that he killed his father. So he it, it's also uh, became a revenge uh, story. Uh, but he didn't kill him. Uh, there was a fight, furious fight with them, uh, between them. Uh, but at last he got him down, he, but didn't kill him because he wanted to prove that he was not the bad guy. So he let him live then uh, so that the police will come and arrest him so he wanted to oh, let the justice do its job <laughs> do you think that King, kingpin was a dangerous opponent for daredevil mm, no uh, just a huge guy but uh, mm. yeah but he was uh, huge right he was huge he was kind of throwing daredevil with one hand you know through the whole room <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was was dangerous, I guess. Yeah, he must have been an ex boxer. He was powerful. Yeah. Okay, so the reason uh, the reason why Daredevil did not kill him because it was not only about it was kind of a humiliation, right? So he wanted to not to kill him, but to put him, you know, under. Oh, the... No, you you missed the point. Okay. Rem Remember earlier in the movie, he hunted down a thug and he was trying to get the thug to tell him who or where Kingpin was and the thug wouldn't talk. So he was beating the guy. And then a little kid came out and said, you're a bad man. And, and Daredevil said, I'm not the bad guy here. But he was beating this guy to death. And he says, he tells the kid, I'm not the bad guy here. So the kid thought he was a bad guy because he was just beating the guy mercilessly. So at the end, when he was going to kill the guy, he remembered the kid. So he told yeah. Kingpin, I'm not the bad guy. So I'm going to let you live. So that kid made him not kill Kingpin because he wanted to follow the law. He's not the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. stupid decision, I guess. So Kingpin will kill him, you know. He'll get out. Yeah, he'll get out in a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It will be a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's remember about Father Everett. Well, do you remember this guy? Yeah. Was he? Um, <laughs> he is. <coughs> I'm sorry, you want just a second. I actually don't. I coughed. Okay. Um, he's a, a very supporting priest. And um, of course, during the movie, he knows um, about Matt. He listened to his confessions. He tried to show him the right way, tries to persuade him. Um, that's all I know about Father Everett. He's a good man, I think. I remember, remember there was some kind of funny dialogue when Father Everett said, you went there not to, uh, not for forgiveness for your sins, but you got here to boast about them or something like this. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> it, was yeah. the, it was in the beginning. So he was kind of yeah. lecturing him, you know, that you have a wrong mindset, right? So... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, you know, beating up bad guys. Uh, and you confess your sin. You know, I beat up a few bad guys today, you know, Father. Uh, <laughs> well, you shouldn't really be doing that. Go say some Hail Marys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And when Daredevil got wounded, he went to the church for help. Remember? When yeah. he got wounded in the shoulder and he finished his fight or something, mm. he, he came to him for help. But then Bullseye showed up. He's a broad-minded person as a priest. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and the last one about Ben Yurich uh, decision at the end of the movie. Well, do you remember what kind of situation it was? So what it what what kind of decision it was in situation at the very end? Yeah. Do you remember Ben Yurich wrote um, his article? Yes, yes. Right? He wrote that uh, Daredevil is Matt Murdock, and he. Uh, uh, he kind of solved the case, right? It was old computer because strange place. Of... <laughs> Typewriting machine, I guess. An old typewriter. Yeah, we call them typewriters. <laughs> old technology. Yes, it was the, 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 the... delete button. Delete button, right? The, the... Yeah, yeah, backspace. No, no. Delete, yeah. Delete. And print. <laughs> yeah. He he was thinking, what should I so do he, with this story, right? To he delete also, this story. He, he didn't reveal Matt's identity, right? Right, right. So he, he sold uh, the case. He that's understood. why I like him. You know, <laughs> I felt it. And at the very end, Leila, you would like the symbolism of this scene, you know. He went there, he looked up. He saw Daredevil. Do you remember he was all always on the roof, right? Yeah. And say, go, Daredevil, go to beat this, <laughs> all this crime. I will on your side, you know. Wow. It, it, it's almost like Daredevil knew he was writing this story. Yeah. That was, that was going to reveal his identity. So he was waiting to see what the guy decided. <laughs> Literally, this makes Matt go on being Daredevil. Exactly. So when he came out and said, go get him, Matt, that meant he wasn't going to reveal his identity. <laughs> right. Now, right. if let's say that he had written the story, how would that have changed Daredevil's fate? He's a criminal, right? He, he, he's has, a, he has to he's go a, to the jail. He's a vigilante. He's taken the law into his own hands. So if he had revealed his identity, they would have arrested Matt Murdock and he'd be in prison, and Daredevil couldn't fight crime anymore. Right. But Matt, as a, you know, Daredevil, helping them to maintain peace. Yeah. So, so Yurik said, I can get a big story and get a little fame for myself, but then stop this guy from fighting crime, or I can give up my fame for a good story and let him continue fighting crime. Right. So he so he made a sacrifice, a, a self sacrifice to help crime get better. Yeah. I do you remember how stupid policy in this movie is? So they did not, uh, they could not figure anything out without Ben's uh, help. <laughs> 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 so prob probably he decided, you know, without me, this uh, you know hillbillies will never solve this case. Yes, when is uh, I remember when I thought with Katie Buranek. Okay, you thought about Katie Buranek, right? Because he, she is investigating. A, a reporter, right? Yes. With, with the same kind of option, right? smart and mm -hmm. dedicated. Yeah, there was a, some, a part of the movie that was kind of weird. Uh, in the comic book, mm -hmm. Daredevil's like logo is two capital D's, one written on top of the other one, but moved a little bit. So you see DD. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it. That's his logo. Uh, remember, in one of the police scenes that Yvonne was talking about, the police, uh, the Ben showed up and said, Oh, it was the Daredevil did this. The police said, There's no Daredevil. <laughs> and he throws a cigarette down. And the fire, yeah. there, right there, the fire. I don't know how the news, the reporter knew this, but there was gasoline on the floor. And when he threw the match down, it lit up the floor. And Daredevil had taken the time to sit there and 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 either carve DD into the floor or spread DD in a gasoline pattern. But he did that, and the DD was Daredevil's logo. So that was like his signature. I was here. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of Daredevil funny. wouldn't do that. 
kind of a red rose, but from Daily Devil. Right? From in Master. the comic books, he did it, but in this movie, that was uncharacteristic. <laughs> yeah. And we can see this, Layla, what we're talking about on this slide. So we see this double D. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Two capital Ds moved apart a little bit. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, all with our questions. With our questions, I guess. So we can we can ask right, uh, Leila. So, what is your favorite line in this movie, except this one when Electra got stabbed? Stabbed. <laughs> yeah, I think um, what I like a lot: never give up. Never give up. Uh, well, do you have any your favorite scene or something? I don't know, a dialogue in this movie? Something that you remember, you know? Ah, yes. Uh, when, how uh, Bullseye uh, went to the Kingpin. How? Uh, yes, this thing. Uh, Kingpin is going to his office. Oh, Bullseye, hello. How you uh, went for my guard? Uh, for this man how you got there how you passed my security guard yes right? this man? yeah he killed the security yes guy. i think it was no uh not necessary no and, uh, this uh king busai wasn't very king pins uh he didn't like him right no, no he wasn't his soldier right he was independent yes independent. Oh, okay yeah. and also uh i like that he said uh, how will you uh, win the man without fear? I will put fear in him. Yeah, yeah, this is an interesting one. Uh, I, I cannot say I understand this, right? Do you remember, Leila, King Pin was asking both sides, how you are going to kill a man without fear, right? I will yeah. put fear inside him. So it was kind of yeah, yeah. comics-like, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> how you can... I... Yeah. It's a good, good answer, you know. The man is so sure that he's going to beat him. Yeah. Now, okay. this this font, Layla, you may not recognize this font because <laughs> you're too young. <laughs> but I know, I know, I'm old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? The old printers, the old computer printers. We used call, to we call print little dots. We call them matrix printers, right, teacher? Yeah, dot mate. We call them dot matrix printers. Yeah, dot matrix. Yeah. And the letters are printed by dots, and you could see every dot in every letter. Uh, so oh, this is Vassans? old. Vassans? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Vassans is old enough to remember that, apparently. <laughs> I, I thought of uh, Braille because that's why. Uh, I Braille, this. okay, okay. Braille works too, okay. <laughs> So, have you seen dot matrix printers in your life? Yes, yes, uh, we have that one. Uh, we still use uh, that printer in postal offices. Yeah, they're real noisy. Yeah. And do you remember they they use a how we call it? They use a black ink ink uh, ribbon ribbon or tape or something. So it's kind of a, a circle tape, yeah. and they. They use it for a long time, so that it's reusable kind of. Yeah, it'll roll one way and roll the other way, and it's like a a real to real ribbon. Yeah, yeah. and it, yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Impact printers. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, make a few slides. Uh, Vova, mm. could you please describe this one? Uh, yes, had <laughs> blindness moment. <laughs> Before blindness. Yes. yes. Okay. Who is on the pitch? Uh, uh, Matt. Matt right? and some men and Matt's father. Jack. Jack, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm, they are fighting. Mm, not fighting. No, no, him. one. No. He's kind of beating him, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, what also else on the picture? Do you know how this is called? This is black subject. Yeah, we call them 55 gallon drums. Drums. <laughs> kind of a drum like a musical instrument, right? Yeah, if you if they're empty and you hit the top, it's like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. yeah. And speaking <laughs> about California, teacher Lee, is the same thing that uh, homeless people use for fire? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you see them in a lot of apocalypse movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, do you know the name of this uh, wooden thing close to the wall? Could be what? We we put uh, usually we put bricks on them or some cargo on them. So, you put it, you, yeah, it's got a wooden pallet. Pallet, yeah. You, you put it on the floor or on the ground, and you stack stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then, and then a, a forklift has two forks. A forklift can go into the bottom of the pallet and lift everything up and carry everything in a stack. So the uh -huh. pallet is what is the bottom of a stack. So the forklift goes inside the pallet bottom and lifts it up and moves things around. Yes, I think. Uh... This two men, Jack and other, this is a symbol. Uh, black and white. Okay. Yes. <laughs> black and white, bad and good one, right? And this is good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And speaking about this wooden pallet, uh, in Russia we have a fashion now to make some kind of uh, primitive uh, furniture from them. Do you have the same? Yeah, you can buy furniture made from pallets and electrical cable spools yeah, yeah, yeah a little yeah, table yeah. yeah it's it's a little bit nah not not for me <laughs> but you know it's a uh, how we call it virtue signaling right so i'm really using something or like yeah this. yeah recycled <laughs> furniture yeah. yeah and we you, you can call this russian design right <laughs> ugly <laughs> enough I would say. Yeah. and i guess a ladder there might have been a ladder there yeah, a ladder. Yeah. A ladder. And a wall made of bricks, right? And kind yep. of, um, I don't know. Now, if you look behind Matt, mm -hmm. that kind of a wall is called corrugated tin. Mm -hmm. Tin is the metal, and it's kind of like an ocean wave surface. We call that corrugated. Mm -hmm. uh, so brick, brick wall, corrugated tin wall. A lot of good dock, you know, dock uh, stuff in this one. And I remember yeah. about this corrugated thing. It's uh, Jorgen told us that he made some kind of corrugated um, paper or something, cartoon or something. I remember. Yeah, card box. Is that right? The, uh, corrugated yeah. card boxes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes boxes. Uh, yeah, cardboards like that. Sometimes gives it strength. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like. Okay, let's. Uh, so he ran after this, right, and got the blindness. <clears throat> but let's skip a few. Wow, a lot of details. <laughs> Vasant, could you please describe this one? And yeah, Vasant, before, before you start, you know, nice pictures. I, I enjoy it. A lot of details, you know, after our previous movie, it's much different. Yeah, eight, yeah after eight, eight, eight episodes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, colorful slides. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is on the roof of the uh, their building, and we can see a generator. I think uh, that's an air condition. That's an air conditioner. Okay, air conditioner. Big fan, and you okay. can see the the water pipes. Yeah, that's oh. an air. Or uh, yeah, the, so that's water goes into it, and it pumps cold water to uh, cooling units. Yeah, okay. then a small. Uh, I would say that the roof, you uh, know, uh, uh, slopey roof. We call we call those skylights. It's glass, okay. and it lets it lets sunlight come in. Oh, okay. it's kind of a window, right? But on the roof. Yeah, if you step on it, you'll fall through and die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can see his father's uh, training uh, with the sandbag and. See ladders and a lot of exercising materials, uh, the bench, wow. everything. He is studying. Uh, so many. I, th uh, mm -hmm. I think that's a water tank. Yeah, huge we water. put we put water tanks on the roof in the old days, and the the water being up high gives you water pressure for the faucets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also for uh, just 
having warm water? Well, this is cold water here. They don't, they don't. Yeah, I'm not sure how buildings do hot water. I don't know how okay. they do that. Because yeah. nowadays they have like, they have got a lot of water tanks on the roofs in order to get warm or hot water. It could be, yeah. In hot countries like Spain or Turkey, they really put tanks on the roof because it's always hot. You don't have to put energy there, you're just getting it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so this guy uh, Matt, like he's can I say watching, not watching, like <laughs> um, what's yeah. the, hearing, right? The listening, listening for exercising, for further exercising, practicing box, right? We can see some how we call them. Uh, I don't remember this metal. Uh, things you know to train your muscles. Okay. Bar barbells. Barbell. Barbells. Right. You can we, see barbell. all, we also call them dumbbells. Yeah. Small, right? So because... if someone if someone is not too smart, sometimes we'll call him a dumbbell. <laughs> You've got as much right, brains uh... as this dumbbell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So this roof looks, um, it doesn't look like a ghetto to me. Well, it's kind of messy, but it's okay. Works yeah. well. Rusty but I only, place, you know. Yeah, rusty. But I'm surprised that people go there, right? Usually I don't expect people on the roof. Yeah, this kind of a roof should be locked up because this is not intended to be, a, you know, go up there and grow plants kind of roof. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Seesaw. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about this one? Could you please describe it? I mean, I did, of course, I enjoyed it a lot because uh, two um, clever persons are trying to win a kind of game. So they're on the seesaws and uh, they are trying to be careful because the balance is very important here. And Matt can't see, he, I mean, he's doing his best. One of them jumps and the other one has to jump as well. Um, I mean, I like it a lot. <laughs> and this um, scenery is good for me because I like the color of the trees. On the right and behind Matt, there's a tree. There's a park bench, I think. And also, what about the pipes, gray pipes, or what do you call them? Bars, teacher Lee? It looks like it used to be a swing set. Okay. And they took the swings away and just left the, the swing set frame. Yeah. Okay. And there is this fire escape, I guess. Right, a kind of um, yep. old fashioned fire escape. Yeah. Right. And the windows look, you know, old, but I like those kind of windows. And, and, and a kind of rubbish box. Yep. Notice, so the, notice the low level windows have metal bars on them. Yeah. We call those burglar bars. You put those on your windows in high crime areas <laughs> ah. so people can't break in through your window. We still have here in Turkey. We have them here in America too in high crime areas. <laughs> yeah. That's the only one. Uh, I like this red brick somehow. They're so small. The, I mean, this brick size is small. This makes it. Yeah, they're very, very popular, very common in America, especially in the old days. Yeah. And what what town is this? Is this New York? Uh, Hell's Kitchen, I think, is in Manhattan. I'm not sure. New York, yeah. Yeah, it's in New York. And what is that on the left next to the. Yeah, Ivan, that one. Two pipes or what? This looks like a meter, some meter of something. Those are electricity meters. Wow. They there's one for every apartment. 
So it, it measures how much electricity you use. And the electric company sends a man around every month and he reads how much electricity you've used. And they, that's how they bill you every month. Okay, thank you, Lee. In the old now days- they are different. In the old days, a man had to go around and read the meter. He was called the meter man. Today, okay. they're electronic and they can be read remotely. They call yeah. it Internet of Things nowadays. Exactly, yeah. But in the old days, somebody had to go around and read every meter in the city. <laughs> so they had a lot of people that did that, yeah. Okay, our time is almost over. So let's make a last slide. We have a few more things for by sons, but we can ask about them if you need in our chat as always. Teacher Lee is always willing to help us with anything. And <laughs> thank you for this. Vasans, Leila, it's good that you are back and it's nice to hear from you. And I enjoyed the movie uh, this time. Yeah, too. I enjoyed me our too. discussion. <laughs> thank you, Teacher I mean, Lee, for your support. Thank you, Teacher Lee. Thank you, everybody. Teacher Lee, I love you. And there's an Electra movie. If you want to see more of Electra, she's got her own movie called to. Electra. Okay. Yeah, I am okay. going to. Okay, let's choose Electra, you know, just to finish, you know, the full series for the next. Yes. Time. Okay, yes, we uh, can do that. All right. Next movie, Electra. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.